Hey everyone, my name is Sam Knight and I'm here to show you how to make this. A custom digital pedal using Electrosmith's Daisy Seed and the Terrarium PCB kit from Pedal PCB. The Daisy Seed is a microprocessor you can flash code onto that can either process or synthesize audio. It currently supports C++, Max MSP using the Gen tilde object, and Pure Data. Terrarium PCB is a pre-designed circuit board that is meant to be similar to the Daisy pedal, a pre-built system that Electrosmith offers. Terrarium PCB provides a cheap alternative to the pedal while offering a lot of the same features. In this video, I'll provide you with the resources needed to build your own pedal using the Terrarium PCB, as well as getting started coding for the Daisy with C++. To start, I'll show you a patch that I wrote featuring a distortion, delay, bit crusher, and flanger, which I then ran through some drums. To get started with the build, you're going to need to order the Terrarium PCB, a Daisy Seed, and the rest of the electronics needed. The PCB can be found here at pedalpcb.com for only $12, as well as a PDF with all the required parts. While you are able to mount this system using any casing you want, the specific PCB is meant to fit in a 125B enclosure. Luckily for us, Tata Electronics sells the enclosure, plus a drill service where we can upload a drill schematic and they'll do it all for us. I've included a drill schematic in the description, but one thing to note about it is it does not include a hole that gives access to the DAISY's micro USB connector, so in order to keep programming the DAISY once it's built, you will need to either add a hole to the drill schematic or drill one yourself like I did. Soldering this kit together isn't too hard, but it may require some soldering experience. For those who haven't built a pedal before, make sure to put your knobs and switches in the casing beforehand, as it will make sure they will all fit perfectly. Once you're done with the pedal, it's time to start working with the Daisy. Electrosmith already has a great guide on how to set up your Daisy environment, so I won't go over it extensively, but you essentially need to first install the Daisy toolchain, as shown here, then copy the Daisy examples repository onto your computer, and then you're ready to start programming in Visual Studio Code. Once you have the folder on your computer, go into Terminal, type CD, and drag the Daisy example folder into it and hit Enter. We can then type Python 3, space, and then copy this line right here into our terminal. This creates a new DAISY project. Here we can choose which DAISY board we're programming. If you're using the Terrarium pedal, then you should type pedal here with a T, then type whatever you want for your folder name, and then make sure to change the board type at the end too. But no matter what board you're programming, most of what I showcase here should still apply. Next, open up your project directory in Visual Studio Code. Since we created our project with a helper script, you can see here we already started with a simple template that takes incoming audio and sends it out. All the signal processing is done in this audio callback function with the input and the output buffers right here. In the main function, we initialize the daisy, set the numbers of sample the callback processes each time, set the sample rate, start the analog to digital conversion, and start our audio. The callback right here is simply copying the input into the output so it will just monitor whatever you're playing. We can put this on our daisy right away by plugging in the daisy, hold down boot, press reset, then let go of boot. Your daisy is now ready to be programmed. In VS Code, go up to Terminal, Run Task, and select Build and Program DFU. This should flash your code onto the daisy so now you can hear yourself playing. To get started with digital signal processing on the daisy, Electrosmith has this amazing library called daisy sp that should already be in your daisy examples folder from earlier. As you can see here, the daisy sp library contains lots of common effects such as reverb, delay, chorus, flanger, and much more. In addition to that, it also has what you need to get started with making your daisy a synthesizer. For now, I'll just show you how to get started with the effects processor. To see all the methods included with each effect, we can easily go into the DAISY SP folder and glance at the header files to see what we can change. We can see here in the flanger header that we have all these different functions to change parameters and also the init and process function, which we'll see in most every single header file here in the effects processors. To start off, you can declare your effect as a global variable in your script. We then need to initialize it in the main function and put our sample rate in as the argument. 
you can use hw.audio sample rate or just glance what it is up here and input that. You could also initialize the starting values of your effect in the main function using the methods we glanced at in the header file. For now, I'll set the LFL frequency, depth, and feedback values of my flanger effect. Within the audio callback function, we can add our flanger effect by using the process function, which takes in the audio that should be processed and outputs it with the effect applied. Also note that zeros and ones in the input and output buffers are different channels as shown here in the daisy diagram. If you're using the terrarium, you can ignore the second channel as nothing is connected to it, which I'll do here. Now in the daisy, we just need to repeat our resetting process, hit build and program DFU again, and now you should be able to hear the effect that you just programmed. This is pretty cool, but it'd be great if we could change the parameters in real time using these knobs. In code, it's a pretty easy thing to do. There are multiple ways to get input from knobs and switches on the daisy, but for now I'll show you one of the quickest ways I typically elect to do on the terrarium pedal, or you could do so on the daisy pedal. First, you'll want to declare some global variables of the parameters you want to change. I'll stick with my flanger effect here and declare variables for the flanger depth, frequency, and feedback. To make our code cleaner, we can put all of our ADC processing in a new function called process ADC. Within it, we can use the knob process function to return the value from our knobs, which is automatically scaled for us between 0 and 1. When fetching your knob data, you'll need to know which ADC input your knob is connected to on the daisy. For the terrarium, they provided a header file containing some enums to simplify figuring out what ports they are. You can download the file in the description, put it in your projects folder, then include the header file at the top of your script, and type using namespace terrarium, then you should be all set to type in terrarium, semicolon, semicolon, then the knob you want in all caps as so. Here I've mapped the first three knobs on my terrarium to my flanger values, so now I'm ready to put the process ADC function within our callback and assign our new values to the flanger. You can do that using the function we did earlier as shown here. A bypass button like a typical guitar pedal would also be quite helpful, which we can easily set up with a boolean value. We can declare our bool at the top, then check for button presses in our process ADC function. There are a few ways to do this, mainly rising edge, which returns true when the button was just pressed, falling edge, which is true if the button was just released, and pressed, which is true so long as the button is held down. In our case, we can just use rising edge. We can easily change our bypass variable using an if statement to check if the button is pressed, and then set our bool to equal of the opposite of what it currently is. An even quicker way to do this is using the exclusive OR operator, like so. All that's left to do is put this line that is processing the flanger in an IF statement saying if we are not bypassing the effect, we can then process the flanger, else we can just put that the output is equal to the input so that it just simply passes through the audio. Now after resetting our daisy and flashing the code, we have a working flanger pedal. Hopefully this tutorial gets you started programming with the daisy. This might have been for a flanger pedal, but the flanger could have easily been replaced out with any of the other daisy SP audio effects. Or you could start combining multiple effects to make multi-effects pedals like the one I showcased in the beginning. All the code from this tutorial will be put in a GitHub repository, as well as the multi-effects pedal that I wrote, so you could look at that to learn more or just upload it to your daisy to play with it. I've also included a version of the final flanger pedal code that instead of being for the daisy pedal or terrarium PCB as we did in this video, it's actually for the daisy seed. So if anybody isn't looking to build the terrarium PCB, they can still see how this code converts over to the daisy seed. If anybody has any questions or troubleshooting, just let me know in the comments. I'd love to help. Thanks for watching.